Research has shown that separation from an abuser can be the most dangerous period for victims of domestic abuse. Family law proceedings can be used by abusers to continue coercion and control and, at worst, kill mothers and their children. Family courts are obliged to protect victims of domestic abuse under human rights law. Yet human rights are rarely raised in family law proceedings. Why? Researchers from the University of Oxford explored experiences of family justice across England and Wales, France, Spain, Italy and Bosnia, with survivors, lawyers, judges and court-appointed experts. Human rights were seen as relevant background context, but rarely seen as an active tool in family law proceedings. I think French law is good enough to protect, so I admit I don't think about it. Survivors also experience negative responses when raising human rights arguments. If a litigant in person writes their own position statement and they put in Article 8 or Article 6, the judge says, Article 8 or Article 6, what do you know about it? You know, we deal with, you know, the real things in this court. Gender stereotyping was also prevalent. Firstly, what a real victim of domestic abuse should look like. There is no doubt that if a woman arrives dressed in a very flamboyant manner, or not sufficiently, let's say, worn out by the situation of violence, she might not be believed or there might be a prejudice against her. And secondly, double standards applied to mothers. The woman is always asked what she does to make the relationship between father and child work. There is never the same inquiry with regard to the father. If human rights law is used, it is primarily used to protect a father's right to family life. I have employed, to be honest, more Article 8 arguments if I'm for the person who they're trying to prevent contact with. So I'm for dad in that sense. Rarely were relevant articles used to protect survivors, such as the right to life, the prohibition of torture and discrimination. We cannot be standard bearers in the fight for human rights. From the social services, from the equality departments, either at a local level or at an autonomous level, that discourse is not there. It's not there. Human rights are not empty rhetoric. They are state obligations that apply to family law proceedings. All family justice professionals need mandatory training on the relevance of human rights law to family law and domestic abuse. Training is also needed on gender stereotyping, discrimination and the application of double standards towards mothers trying to protect themselves and their children from further trauma and abuse. Women's and children's rights are human rights. To find out more about what this means for your practice, visit bit.ly slash human rights dash DA 